Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial I'm going to be taking a look at processing and capturing the moon. We'll first start with how I set up my telescope and camera to capture the moon and then we'll get into how I process it to get the final result. Let's get started. Here are some things to keep in mind when capturing the moon. You want to wait until the moon is high overhead or at least well above the horizon, preferably with good seeing. This gets the moon well above lower level atmospheric distortions. You can check seeing with the Astrospheric app or with Meteo Blue. You'd like to use a color camera so you can create a mineral moon photo. More about that later. You want to take video capture. I like to use SharpCap for video capture. You want to try to match the field of view with the region of interest to maximize the frame rate. Essentially, you want to make the moon fit in the frame, but barely, so you don't have a lot of outside extra space you're capturing. This will speed up your video capture speed. You want to rotate the camera so the moon looks right side up. This saves you from having to rotate it later in post-processing. I like to focus on a star first using a Batonoff mask. You'll see this classic six-pointed star that looks symmetric when you're perfectly focused. Once you're focused on the star, remove the mask and go back to the moon and you should be all set for a very sharp picture. I like to keep my exposure under 10 milliseconds. What this does is this freezes the seeing, so any distortions in the atmosphere don't tend to make blurry frames. I also like to make my histogram somewhere around 70%, so I don't get too many areas that are too bright or too dark. Now the moon is a very special object in that it's the only thing in the sky that really doesn't change you can take as much video as you want because the moon is not changing. In contrast, if you're looking at the sun or you're looking at a planet, the planet's rotating, the sun's moving, but the moon is not. It's static. So what I do is I typically capture three minutes of video. Now this can create some very large files. It may take some time in post-processing, especially for the initial stacking, but I think it's worth it to get good data. All right, so you open Auto Stackert. You're going to find the file. There's the moon. You want to pick an area of the moon that's got a lot of contrast. You control click to center it. You're going to be set for surface, improve tracking, expand, and the first thing I'm going to do is analyze. So take a few moments. It's a very large file. Okay, at this point, looks like pretty good data. We're going to leave drizzle off. We're going to place a grid. You want to have at least a thousand points. This is too many, 24,000. So let's go and try that. Still a lot. Try 200. Now I've got 1500 alignment points. That's pretty good. I set the minimum brightness for 5 just to capture the entire area. We're going to select 400 frames to stack, and now we're going to press stack. Okay, so we should have a stacked TIFF now. Let's take a look at it. We're going to open it up in a couple of different sharpening packages and see which one we like the look of better. All right, now we're going to try sharpening with IMPPG. Now this is my by far preferred program for solar sharpening and stretching, but I find that Registax does a better job on the moon. But let's take a look at it and see how you would use it. It's recommended that you have LR deconvolution turned off, so we're going to disable that and just use the unsharp mask feature here. So you can increase the amount of sharpening, which is now we're limited to this little box until I click that for the entire moon. And then it covers the entire moon. I can also play around with the tone curve. You see this is adding some contrast.
This is obviously way over sharpened. You can see the, the graininess on the edge of the limb there. So you can play around with this and you certainly can do a decent job sharpening it, but I found I got a little better result when I go to Registack. So let's just take a look at that instead. So here's the file in Registax. And again, it's limiting its sharpening to this area. Now I've previously set this up to be almost 100% and about 78%. I like the kind of sharpening I was getting there. And what I can do is select do all and it will cover the entire moon. It does take some time, but it's a large file. I find the best numbers are somewhere between 80 and 100 for layer one and 50 and 80 for layer two. That tends to give me the best results. Now, one of the things you'll see on the moon is as you sharpen, sometimes little craters get these bright rings around them. And it's useful to be able to diminish the appearance of those bright rings. There's a function here called denoise deringing. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to enable, and we're going to turn it on again. And if I look at the bright side and I increase it, let's see what happens to these bright rings. See how they're bright here and they're dim there. But I find if you push it too far, it affects the contrast and the sharpness that we're looking at. So you can move it along a bit just to take a little bit of the brightness off the edge of these bright little crater rings. And of course you can move around different parts of the moon, see what things look like. We're going to do some other sharpening and denoising later, but I think this is a, a reasonable first start. Here's a look at Tycho down here. Um, all right, so I'm not going to play with any of these other functions here. I don't need to rotate the moon. It's, I'm okay with the way it is. So I'm going to save this at this point, and I'll just call it... Uh, video sample. And now at this point we're ready to go into Affinity Photo and make our final changes. Okay, we open up our file we just got from Registax and we're in Affinity Photo. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop. I'll press C for crop and I'll drag this corner in. You want to have, and I'll have a nice symmetric aspect ratio on the moon. Don't want to process anything. We don't need to process. So I'll just use that for now. We could rotate the moon if we had to. I'll unlock the image, select the arrow key, and then I can just do this if I had to rotate it. But we took care of that in an earlier step. So the moon looks fine the way it is. Don't need to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is I want to improve the contrast on the moon. I'm going to go into the tone mapping persona. And I have a couple of presets here, but let's just start with nothing changed. And this local contrast function is extremely powerful. I'm going to say control plus plus to zoom in a bit on the surface. Now if I move this local contrast to the right, you'll see this is obviously way too much, but I find 20 to 30 percent gives you a nice increase in contrast on the surface of the moon. So let's go with, uh, with 20 percent. And I'm also going to increase the brightness, also about 20, 15, I call it 15%, make it a little bit brighter. Happy with that, I'll say apply. Okay, so now we have the moon with a little more contrast, control zero to make it normal size. Now, one of the interesting ways you can look at the moon is with what's called the mineral moon. And it turns out that while the moon looks black and white to the naked eye, if you increase saturation, on the moon's surface, you find that some of the Maria areas are rich in iron. They turn out that they are brown. And some of the other areas in the Maria are rich in titanium, which have a deep blue color. And we can make that come out by simply increasing the saturation. Now, what I've done is I've created a couple of macros that increase saturation by 15% or 34%. And I can just apply those, or you can do it manually, just increasing saturation yourself. But let's just use the macro. So I'll add 34% once, twice, three times, four times. 
So now you see this area has become brownish, this area has become bluish, and you have this mineral moon feature. Now, one thing I don't want to happen is we've got this white area has now got a bit of a greenish tinge to it, and that's because it's an RGGB uh, pixel map on the camera, and I want to get rid of that. Well, one of the cool features of Affinity Photo is it does have these uh, James Ritson astrophotography macros you can get for free or for a pound or two if you want to donate. And uh, they're really powerful. I'm going to skip over almost all of them here and just go directly to uh, this uh, green channel synthetic substitution. And I click on this macro. Watch what happens to the moon. Okay, the green is gone. And uh, now we have the nice mineral moon colors and you know some brownish areas here but the green cast that we had before is now completely gone. Now another thing that you can sometimes get with the moon is a little bit of a chromatic aberration especially around the limb. Let's just take a look up here. If you look at the very top of the moon here there's a little bit of blue right at the edge here. Okay so what I'm going to do is uh, let's create a new pixel layer and then I'm going to do control U for the HSL function and here I can reduce the saturation on the moon and you see now it's just a black and white image well I don't want to do the whole moon like that because we have this whole mineral moon thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce it until I see this go away and then just apply it to the limb and the way I do that is I go under layer invert and then I select the paintbrush tool and I have to make sure that when I have the paintbrush tool selected, I've got the white color shown, and I'm going to hit Control plus 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 a few times. And when I paint over this area, it's going to apply that change that I made that uh, takes care of the color and just makes it uh, more muted, more monochromatic. I'll just take a look here. It's a little bit of it there. There's a touch of it in this crater. I'll get rid of that. I think that's okay. All right, I think the rest of it's fine. So we're done with that. We'll do control zero to get it back to normal. So it's looking pretty good. There are a number of ways that you can denoise. I like using a plugin from uh, Affinity Photo. And so to do that, I'm first going to go back to my uh, library. Affinity Photo normally works in 32 bit RGB, but the plugin only works in 16-bit, so I'm going to select 16-bit. I'm going to say Filters, Plugins, Topaz Labs, Topaz Photo AI. And I'm going to provide a link to this in the uh, description of the video, the tutorial. I'm not going to do this upgrade at the moment. Now, what I've found, I have a number of different enhancements that I've created for doing solar and, and ISS coverage of the moon, photosphere and the chromosphere and so on. I'm not going to use any of those. I'm just going to do it manually here. I'm going to zoom in a bit further. And so this is showing us here the before on the left and the after on the right. And of course, I haven't done anything yet, so there's no change. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some denoising. And I'm going to use the extreme denoise. And I'm only going to use one, the lowest possible denoise. And uh, let's just take a look and see what that does. So you can see, if you look at the uh, the Maria here, that it's a little smoother here. And you've got a little more definition in the craters. I'll go back down here to uh, uh, Tycho. Make that a little more if we want. So I think that's definitely an improvement. It's much smoother here now. So I'll say export back to Infinity Photo. And at that point, I think I'm pretty satisfied with uh, the moon that I've got. At this point, you can simply go over here to File, Export, and I can export this as you know a JPEG or any kind of other uh, file type that I wanted, PNG or TIFF or something and whatever quality you want. So I'll say export and I'll call it uh, final moon. And away we go. 
So that's my process. I hope that that was uh, interesting and perhaps a little bit helpful. And um, the one thing you can consider as well, if you want to stir up a hornet's nest, you can superimpose your moon photo on a background of stars. I've done this with moon photos and planet photos. Now purists know that to properly expose for the moon or any bright planet, stars are going to be invisible. But non-experts tend to enjoy the look of a planet or the moon with a background of stars. In my informal surveys on social media with thousands of viewers, about two-thirds prefer the starry background. It's up to you, but you can expect that if you do put a starry background, you're going to get some complaints from people who say that's not really how it looks. Anyway, hope that was helpful and uh, look forward to seeing what results you guys come up with.